Good morning, uh, everyone. So thank you very much also for the uh, introduction. So I'm currently uh, working with UNODC and I'm the senior, I'm senior advisor on HIV. And I'm also the global focal point uh, on HIV and people who uh, inject drugs. So, uh, I need to... Uh, thank you. So I will try to do a brief presentation on the uh, international uh, standards and policies. Okay. So just before I start, so briefly, um, UNODC is the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crimes, and it has uh, many mandates related to, to drug uh, control, drug demand reduction, drug uh, traffic redu reduction, and also uh, on crime prevention and criminal justice. But um, UNODC is also one of the co-sponsors of uh, UNAIDS, and as you might know, UNAIDS is a joint program of the United Nations on HIV and AIDS, and uh, it is composed of 11 co-sponsors and one secretariat. In Geneva, you have the secretariat. And each co-sponsor has a clear uh, responsibility, so we have a division of labor, based on our other mandates. There's a light here on that. <laughs> and, uh, hmm? I don't know, no, 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 is, is this, no, it's okay. No, no, I want to go back. I was asking if there was a light. There's a pointer. No, okay. And uh, so, um, that's the reason, I mean, UNDC is responsible is a convening agency for HIV among people who inject drugs and for HIV uh, in prisons. So what is the current situation uh, globally based on the uh, World Drug Report 2014? Uh, we have an estimated 12, uh, almost 13 million people who inject drugs, which correspond to a prevalence worldwide of 0.27%. And uh, out of the 12.7 uh, million uh, people who inject drugs, uh, at least 13% uh, or 1.7 million are living with HIV. And uh, the uh, HIV uh, prevalence is, uh, as you can see on the map, it's mainly uh, in uh, Eastern Europe and in Asia but it is also uh, affecting uh, almost all parts of the world. But the situation is most severe in, the, uh, in Eastern Europe and uh, Central Asia and Asia. And the highest prevalence rates uh, are uh, observed in, uh, among people with drug are observed in Southwest Asia, where you have uh, almost 30% HIV prevalence among people with inject drugs. And in Southeastern Europe, where you have 23% uh, uh, of people with inject drugs living with HIV. Uh, I just would like to make a comment on the target. I mean, in uh, 2011, all the countries committed to uh, reducing, halving the HIV uh, incidence, so the number of new cases of HIV among people with inject drugs by 50% by 2015. And currently, uh, no, as of uh, 2013, the uh, reduction of uh, new infection was only 10%, so very far from the 50% uh, targets. And just to add something uh, to that, it will be uh, the new targets that are going to be that are considered a 75% reduction of new infection by 2020 and 90% reduction of new infection by 2030. And this, uh, considering that uh, the low progress we have made at the, um, at the global level, so only 10% reduction in three years, uh, it will require drastic and very focused uh, uh, interven interventions. I just want to say yeah, before that, I mean, in the HIV prevalence in prisons is always higher than in the community. And I took here examples from countries where you have a high prevalence of people who inject drugs, which means that you have, and because of the high, uh, the excessive uh, incarceration of people we, uh, 
uh, inject drugs, this HIV prevalence can be very, very high. And you can see, for example, uh, in, in green you have the HIV prevalence in the prison and in the in, in reddish, in the general population, you can see in Mauritius or in Ukraine or in Kyrgyzstan. In Kyrgyzstan, for example, the HIV prevalence in prisons is 45 times higher than in the, um, in the general, general population. So what, is the, what are the, the international recommendations? So, the, uh, the, uh, so you have the CEO, the, um, UNAIDS and uh, WHO, UNDC and UNAIDS recommend a comprehensive package of nine interventions. Uh, these uh, nine interventions uh, are neither in syringe program, opioid substitution therapy, and other evidence-based drug dependent treatment, HIV testing, counseling, and uh, ARV, and then prevention and treatment of uh, sexually transmitted infections condom programs for people who inject drugs and their sexual partners, targeted information, education, and communication for people who inject drugs and their sexual partners, prevention, vaccination, diagnosis, and treatment of viral hepatitis, and prevention, treatment, and diagnosis, uh, diagnosis and treatment of uh, tuberculosis. These uh, nine interventions uh, are classified by order of priority. So, the f and the first four are the most uh, important one: the needle and syringe program, opioid substitution therapy, uh, HIV testing, and access to uh, uh, to ARV. And the, in, in order to prevent HIV among people who inject drugs. I mean, the countries are really urged to uh, implement neither and syringe program and uh, of case of tissue therapy. This comprehensive package has been endorsed by all uh, U uh, many UN bodies, including the UN General Assembly, the ECOSOC, the Commission on Narcotic Drugs, the UNAIDS Program Coordinating Board, and it's also uh, endorsed by the Global Fund and uh, by PEPFAR. Uh, Peter showed you uh, earlier, at the beginning of his presentation, the, the, glob the global coverage of the international program and of OST and ARV, which indeed is very low. And if, you, uh, and if you look at the number of people who get access to the tree, it's even much, much lower. Because, uh, and so, I mean, if the situation remains like this, we will not be able to, uh, to, to reach 50% uh, or 75% or even 90% uh, reduction of new HIV in infection. Uh, just very uh, quickly, so why these uh, interventions? All these interventions are evidence-based. And the first one is another and syringe uh, program. HIV as hepatitis C or hepatitis B is transmitted among people who inject drugs through sharing injection equipment. It is the sharing of the equipment that is transmitting HIV. It is not the use of the drugs. And so it is quite obvious, rationally, that the, if you prevent, if you give clean needle and syringe program, you will stop the, the transmission. So it has all the, uh, the literature review it has shown that uh, it is effective in reducing the rate of HIV transmission and hepatitis C, that it doesn't lead to uh, the initiation of uh, injecting among people who are not injecting uh, drugs previously. It doesn't increase the frequency of injection and it doesn't increase the, the frequency or duration of illicit uh, uh, drug use. On the other hand, it has also, in addition, it has other advantages, and it is allows to provide information, to provide uh, on the disease, on the, the services available to the people who inject drugs. For many people, is the first. For many people who inject drugs, neither syringe program is the very first contact with a health program, and uh, it allows uh, to give the information and to refer them uh, if necessary to opioid substitution therapy, to HIV testing, to ARV, and to TB. It reduces also the number of used syringe discarded in public areas. So, um, indeed, we, we say neither exchange program. We don't say neither exchange program. And we don't say uh, neither in exchange programs because exchange constitute a buyer for people who inject drugs to access uh, the needles. But in, in so there is no uh, clearly we, we talk about neither and syringe program. 
Uh, but nevertheless, I mean, it allows also uh, you to inform the people who inject drugs on the, the need not to discard the, the, uh, the used needles in uh, public areas, and it can also encourage to, for returning the, the needles. But as long as the police or other or, uh, will arrest people who inject drugs carrying needles, I mean, you will never get uh, return, uh, used needles returned because no one will take the risk of being arrested for returning a used needle. So, I mean, everything is uh, going together, but um, the, uh, the major uh, message is that we are talking about a needle and syringe program. So, the second one was, uh, is the effectiveness of uh, opioid substitution therapy. I mean, uh, this effect, of, I mean, I just, I want to go back, I'm, I'm sorry, I just want to say that, I mean, the effectiveness of the research program has been demonstrated both in the community and in prisons. Uh, the effectiveness of opioid substitution therapy has also been uh, demonstrated very effective both in the community and in, in prisons. I mean, it reduced the, uh, the, the use of uh, Opioid, it reduced the frequency of unsafe injection, it reduced the risk of overdoses and the risk of miscarriage or abortion for among pregnant uh, uh, women. It increased also the retention in drug dependence treatment and it increased the adherence to uh, ARV treatment and to hepatitis C treatment. So it should never, never be an exclusion criteria to be uh, uh, on OST for accessing ARV or hepatitis C treatment. And generally speaking, it improved the, the well-being, the health status, people can, can uh, operate, uh, they have a social life, they can have an economical life also, and they can work. So, and uh, it reduced certainly the criminal behavior, and in prisons, it reduced the recidivism and violence uh, in prisons and drug-seeking uh, uh, behavior. Because now, why are we talking about uh, a comprehensive package? And this is, uh, is, is, a, is a mathematical model that was developed many years ago, I think. Yeah, 2008. And uh, here you can see uh, what would be the, the natural uh, evolution of an HIV epidemic uh, among pe people who uh, inject drugs in the absence of a needle and syringe program and the absence of OST. This, is, this line is for uh, HIV. If you had hepatitis, it would be much steeper because, I mean, almost, uh, I can remember, 80% of the people who inject us get, uh, in the absence of prevention, get uh, infected with hepatitis C in less than one, than one year. So if you add um, uh, OST uh, only, this would be the reduction of uh, HIV uh, prevalence. If you add uh, neither and syringe program, I mean, the reduction is uh, much higher than uh, OST um, alone. And um, now if you have both, I mean, OST and neither and syringe program, uh, you have the, the best uh, uh, comb combination. But clearly, I mean, it's neither and syringe program which is the most uh, effective and it is the most cost effective. And uh, it is not only cost effective, the research program, it also uh, gets benefits. So you have a return on investment if you in, uh, invest uh, on um, on the and research program, the benefits uh, are higher than the investment. And I mean, what are the, the criteria I mean, for harm reduction and for a needle and syringe program or OST is that, first of all, they have to be uh, physically accessible and not, and so it it's means that uh, they should be uh, geographically uh, well distributed and uh, including in a hard to reach uh, location and it means also including uh, in presence. They should be affordable, so patients should not have to pay for uh, the services. I mean, they should be uh, free. And they should be equitable and non-discriminatory, so you shouldn't have no, no exclusion criteria except uh, for medical ones. But I mean, that is mainly for uh, OST, and there is almost no exclusion medical uh, exclusion criteria. criteria. 
So, um, a pre-substitution therapy should not be limited to, to the people who inject drugs who are only living with HIV or, or failed other drug dependence treatment and you shouldn't have uh, compulsory treatment. And uh, finally, the, the services should be not rationed. It means that you should not limit the number, uh, for example, the number of uh, syringe. You should, um, for example, you should never have a strict exchange because uh, if a drug user comes and, and to return uh, I don't know, two, two syringe and you have programs where they would give only two syringe in exchange, uh, two new syringe in exchange of uh, two uh, used syringe, the problem is that it doesn't correspond to the need of the person. And the person, if she, de if she or he doesn't have uh, enough needles, will share. And the objective is that they don't share, they don't use other needles, so uh, you would fail uh, uh, your, your um, objective. So there is no reason for, to follow a restriction. Also, according to the drug use, I mean, the needs in syringes might differ. I mean, people who uh, inject heroin typically would inject three times a day. So people who inject cocaine or amphetamine uh, might uh, inject 20 times, 20 times a day for a short time, a short period of time, a few days, and then stop. And th so the needs uh, might be very, might differ a lot from one person to another. Just to illustrate the effectiveness, this is, for, this is in Mauritius, so it's not in Europe. <laughs> and um, in Mauritius, it's a sp special situation in Africa because it's an island on the Indian o Ocean, and it has a very high prevalence of people who inject drugs, and it's one of the highest. It, it's, it's a small population, but if you, if you look in prevalence, it's, much, it's very high, it's one person or more, I can't remember. But anyway, and so they were f facing a very uh, severe uh, HIV epidemic among people who inject drugs, and it was completely concentrated among people who inject drugs. The epidemic, they, they don't have general epidemic. And um, in, you can see uh, in, uh, in blue here, you have the new, the total new uh, cases of HIV, and uh, the orange line is the new uh, HIV cases among people who inject drugs. So you can see how it increased uh, dramatically very, very fast between 22, 25. And in uh, 25, they, de they decided to introduce either an exchange program, and the, the, the drop in the number of new cases is, uh, is very important, it's very impre impressive and, and immediate. And then uh, a year later, they start introducing uh, OST, and the, the drop continued. But I mean, it just as I think this illustrates very well the effectiveness uh, of uh, needle exchange program and OST to control uh, an, an epidemic. Even in this case, was a new epidemic among HIV among people who inject drugs. Just uh, I just mentioned earlier that uh, the. Um, that both the intervention program and OST uh, should be available, uh, accessible in prisons also. And I just want to mention the uh, UNODC uh, comprehensive package for HIV in prisons, which has 15 interventions. But and out of these 15 interventions, you have all the, the nine interventions from the comprehensive uh, package for HIV and people who inject drugs. So all the harm reduction uh, inter inter interventions uh, are there. I will not go through all the, 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 the principles, but the main one, I mean, is the, the in present, present health is public health, and that um, the, the services in present should be uh, based on human rights uh, standards, which means, uh, which in one of the most uh, important uh, is the principle of equivalence that people who are in prison should access the same services, health services, as the people in the in the in the community. Now we come back to the you know, justice reform and prison reform. Just to show you an example how effective it can be uh, in prisons, uh, on the, the upper part of the of the slide, you have the uh, HIV, uh, the number of new cases of HIV in Lithuania uh, without needle and change program, without opioid substitution therapy, with HIV testing that is mandatory HIV testing, and with a low coverage of ARV therapy and uh, some uh, peer education program. On the, and you can see the number of new cases increasing, in pre, of HIV cases increasing uh, in Lithuania. And in Lithuania, again, we have the same uh, pattern. It's a, 
uh, an epidemic uh, driven by sharing injection uh, equipment. On the lower part, you can see in Spain, where you have emergency program in all present, you have a substitution therapy, you have HIV testing and ERV, and you can see the drop in the number of new cases of HIV uh, infection in presence. I mean, there are, there are many uh, bottlenecks. I mean, it's not only uh, the uh, the services themselves. I mean, the, and we know what uh, needs to be done, and uh, we know what is necessary to control the the um, the epidemic. And um, uh, however, as it was mentioned uh, several times before, the coverage is very low, and the access uh, is very low, and even I don't know. 25 years after uh, all the evidence has been developed, many countries are still struggling uh, for uh, giving access of people who inject drugs to a uh, new exchange program and uh, opioid substitution uh, therapy. We, uh, you know, you see we had a strategy uh, for, um, to try to support the countries to uh, reach their 50% ta reduction of uh, new uh, HIV infection uh, by 2015, and the strategy was global, so we had identified 24 high priority countries, and in each of these countries we, we asked them to develop a plan of action from 2013, from 2015, focusing on the bottlenecks. And even if these 24 countries were in all part of the, different parts of the world, from Asia to Latin America, uh, from Far East to, to uh, Latin America, and the bottlenecks were almost uh, everywhere the same. I mean, we put the first one, the strategic information. The lack of strategic information is not a bottleneck as such for uh, implementing. You, should, you don't need very, uh, very solid strategic information to start implementing if you know the situation like that, you don't need it. The problem is that you, you need it for advocacy very often. If you don't have uh, data, uh, it's very difficult to um, advocate and also for uh, monitoring. So the poor access to and the poor quality of harm reduction services was uh, uh, certainly a, a problem and the need for uh, capacity building uh, was everywhere uh, identified. But mainly what I want to insist is on the lack of supportive policy and uh, legislative uh, uh, environment. And in, it's not only the, the legal uh, framework that this might be not uh, uh, adequate. Sometimes the legal framework is adequate, but the attitude of the law enforcement uh, agencies is inadequate, is not um, uh, supportive. So I think that the policy, the, the, uh, the legal framework is one thing, and the other one is the attitude of law enforcement uh, agencies. And then the lack of uh, financial resources. I mean, globally, 92% uh, of the funding for harm reduction uh, programs rely on international uh, donors, which means that uh, uh, the, the day the international donors uh, leave, like it was in, in Romania, uh, the, the, there is, the programs are not sustained. And this is really uh, a problem and really need to, to find ways to uh, increase the domestic funding and the ownership of the, of the, of the countries. And, uh, but all this situation, all these bottlenecks are really uh, underpinned by the high level of uh, uh, stigma and discrimination against people who inject drugs. And this uh, stigma and discrimination is in the general pop population, in the media, in, and, uh, but also in the health, uh, general health care uh, uh, services and certainly uh, among the law enforcement uh, agencies. And uh, this is really uh, the, the, the major uh, bottleneck, the major, the, the major um, uh, uh, point. That's why in addition to uh, trying to improve um, access to needle and syringe program, uh, to, to provide, I mean, needle and, uh, to make available needle and syringe program and OST, you also have to uh, address uh, what we call the critical uh, enablers. Maybe the wording is not <laughs> the best one, but anyway. Uh, and um, the, the one uh, we mentioned already, the supportive legal and policy framework, I mean, vis-a-vis -vis the people who, who inject trust, but also vis-a-vis uh, -vis the uh, service providers and the, uh, uh, in particular, the harm reduction 
uh, service um, uh, providers. I would like to come back to a comment, to something you mentioned uh, earlier, saying that you were um, trying to organize a meeting with the municipality, etc. And indeed, it's very important because, I mean, the uh, uh, HIV among people with HIV, it's, it's not only a health issue, it's, it's a human rights issue, it's a drug policy issue, it's a legal issue, it's a criminal justice issue. And it, it means that it, you need to have all the stakeholders around the table to uh, agree and to uh, to see how we can best uh, improve the, the life of the people who inject drugs and for the community uh, uh, in general. For, so for the response to be effective, the rights of people, uh, the rights to health of people who inject drugs have to be uh, respected. So it means that you, you need to address also the stigma and the punitive uh, legal framework. And, uh, and I want to just to show, oh no, I cannot show you. I, want to <laughs> I wanted to show you uh, uh, this picture. I mean, uh, last year, in 2013, 2014, uh, we uh, uh, conducted workshops uh, with law enforcement agencies and CSO in 18 countries. And uh, in each of these workshops, you had about 30 participants, 50 from um, 15, sorry, from uh, CSO and 15 from uh, law enforcement agencies. And the objective of these uh, workshops were to um, to uh, inform the, the law enforcement agency or what is HIV when people inject, what is people with, who are people with injectors, what is the, um, the influence of their attitude on people in drug drugs to access services and how they can, they can become supportive uh, for uh, people in drug drugs to uh, access the, the services. And on the other hand, for the CSO, it was to try to, uh, the, the objective was to increase their capacity to advocate with uh, the, the, the police. So for two days, I mean, this group of 30 people were together in the same in the same room exchanging on their, their concern priorities, trying to, to, under, to understand each other and understand the, the, how we can best work uh, together. What was really uh, amazing, or maybe, maybe not amazing, but the, it was the first time for all of them, for the first time that they had an opportunity to have a dialogue, an open, free dialogue. And, uh, and it was something that they, they evaluated as one of the best uh, results of uh, this experience. So I think the, 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 the lesson is that, I mean, uh, there is a need for dialogue, and you, you cannot, there is a need for dialogue and to explain to each other uh, uh, what are the needs and what can each of us uh, it is important to mention that uh, harm reduction interventions are not in contradiction with the International Drugs Convention and that the international drug policies uh, do neither require the incarceration of drug users nor the criminalization of, for the use of drugs. And this is very important when you uh, try to uh, address the legal framework. I mean, there is no need to criminalize the use of drugs or the possession of drugs for personal use according to the um, International Drug uh, Convention. And uh, last but not least, I mean, uh, it is very important to, uh, to ensure appropriate uh, funding, and I think we'll also see uh, the example of Greece, uh, the negative impact of uh, stopping uh, funding. As, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, domestic funding, because uh, it is, first of all, it is, there is a benefit for the countries to invest in harm, in harm reduction, and uh, number two, I mean, uh, for, for the sustainability. Just before I stop, I just would like to show three uh, new uh, uh, publications we had uh, this year, yes. So the first one is a, a training manual for police and on HIV and people who inj inject drugs. Uh, and the idea is that uh, the, the police can, could use that in their training academy uh, to sensitize them on HIV and people who inject drugs. The second one on the right is a policy brief on HIV and women who inject drugs, which goes beyond the comprehensive package, but also address the specific needs uh, of women. And the last one is a handbook on how to implement needle and syringe program uh, in. 
presence, and I think it's the end. So before I start, I would like to uh, quote uh, our executive director, and um, and this is a quote from uh, the speeches at the UNIT's uh, program granting board last uh, July. Is it unfortunately many national drug control systems rely on sanctions and imprisonment rather than evidence-based health care in full compliance with human rights standards? And these are major barriers to HIV and harm reduction services, including in prisons and other close settings. Thank you. You can see here the, the our website and uh, my email address. <laughs> 